What defines a subclass? I'm sure most of you will be new to this topic as a subclass has never been involved within this game before. Until now. So, let's go over a quick definition for this newly stated term. A subclass essentially empowers an existing class to adapt into a secondary role, eliminating the necessity for the developers to generate an entirely new class. The line infantry can do just that, with the release of the first ever Guts and Black Powder subclass, the Lancer. Now, with the initial launch of the Pike and the Cobb update, we overlooked several crucial aspects of this melee weapon in the video that I covered for it. So today, we will look into both the strengths and the weaknesses of the Pike and see why the creation of the first subclass was a significant decision. But first, a history lesson. During the Napoleonic era, the pike, also referred to as the spontoon, which was a shortened variant of the pike, persisted as a symbol among certain non-commissioned officers, or NCOs. It primarily served as a tool for gestures and signals rather than a combat weapon. Ultimately, the introduction of bayonets rendered the concept of the pike to be obsolete, and it enabled more versatile usage on the battlefield. With that being said, there's actually a customizable option for the pike that showcases a flag on the weapon with the game's newest regiment pack, Regiment Pack 4. This unlocks the cavalry section for the French, and the Lancer subclass as a whole can be seen there. With that boring part out of the way, we can now head into the description of the pike. You can purchase it in Bubble Shop for 1,000 francs, and you can equip it as a primary weapon, substituting your firearm and transitioning you into the Lancer subclass. Slap on your reading glasses as we delve into the card statistics. The pike does 50 damage, which is the second, or technically third, highest damage dealing melee weapon, transforms you into the Lancer subclass, has long distance, a small hitbox, and a run-through charge ability, which is initially seen on the musket's bayonet first. You didn't see anything. <laughs> Let's address the obvious downside, because unlike the Bush administration, it's hard to miss. And that is the significant drawback of not having a firearm while wielding this weapon. While the primary objective of the line infantry trees to wreak havoc and cause chaos like a cracked out headless chicken, the launch of the pike as a primary weapon drastically altered the gameplay by replacing the option to equip a firearm. Nonetheless, the discussion here isn't entirely one-sided, so there's no need to despair just yet. The pike offers an insane reach, being able to poke at the undead from far away, an exceptional taste for protecting your personal bubble. We did check the reach before when it dropped, and it still remains the same at a consistent length being able to go through three bodies at once. Also being confirmed in the wiki, with the average penetration displaying three. The penetration capability of this weapon enables it to strike multiple zombies lined up in succession with its forward momentum. And this is very effective for slapping clustered zombies, especially as the waves progress, aiding the team in maintaining their position by inflicting consistent damage. Moreover, it proves to be highly efficient when synchronized with charging runners in a horde, effectively neutralizing smaller threats while also dealing damage to the larger group. Currently in the game right now, the other melee weapons lack the extended reach of the pike, but they do excel in delivering splash damage to a horde up front. This is a feature that the pike lacks. The pike specializes in targeting individual zombies or lines of them, whereas other melee weapons can effectively strike multiple zombies in a close proximity. Each weapon offers its own advantages and operates uniquely in various scenarios. Moving on to the extended reach provided by the pike, it grants access to certain out-of-reach areas and wall techniques, allowing players to eliminate zombies from positions that other melee weapons cannot reach. Some notable examples include the loft camping spots on two endless maps, La Firme and La Isente, which offer a single entrance for the undead and a secure location at a safe distance for poking and stabbing. Additionally, the other endless map, Hugemont, there is an area where players can assist their team by poking through the invisible barrier in the back, the two popular camping spots in this endless map. In San Sebastian, there's an ideal camping spot near the hay bale objective. Players can hit and eliminate zombies as they emerge from the stone wall entrance. It's also insanely easy to survive while sacrificing with the pike since the headshots are easy to accomplish while the zombies just climb on up. In the final part of Cobb's map, 
The basement cells contain zombies that can be targeted and eliminated from a considerable distance. We must say that overall, the pike proves to be an excellent weapon for piercing through walls and doors, allowing players to check for hidden bombers or runners. A lot of things you can do with the pike for the reach that it provides, and honestly, I probably missed some spots or missed some other ideas that the pike can reach in certain maps, so let me know in the comment section down below, or feel free to tell me your thoughts and opinions so far. Next, I want to discuss the huge headshot damage that the pike can do, because it is astonishing. <laughs> Astonishing. During endless waves, the pike is capable of delivering headshot kills to shamblers, runners, and igniters up to wave 28. This capability extends to objective modes as well, where it can instantly kill shamblers, runners, and igniters with headshots. However, for zappers, they are just the overlord juggernauts of this game. But with the far reach of the pike, you can poke them at a long distance. Similar to the musket's bayonet, the pike enables players to charge into zombies swiftly with the officer's charge ability, boosting both damage output and the speed. This was recently modified in an update, also showcasing the visual alteration of the pike, which allows you to look up and down in third person now. This all results in smoother advancement through zombie hordes. Before, with the small hitbox of the pike, it was actually difficult to be able to charge through zombies. Okay, um, oh, oh hey, how you doing over there? <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> According to the Pike's wiki, it behaves the same to the bayonet when paired with the officer's charge ability. And if this is the case, then the Pike deals 10 times its base damage while in charge mode, effectively obliterating any obstacles in its path. But watch out for the bombers. Or should you? The pike excels at dispatching bombers with ease. Its extended reach allows players to strike bombers from a safe distance. And depending on the distance, players can eliminate multiple bombers in a single life with minimal to no damage taken. This advantage right here stands out as one of the pike's most significant benefits. This is scarcely achievable with the musket's bayonet, as it typically results in heavy damage despite surviving the encounter with the first bomber. In a nutshell, the bayonet would be the alter ego argument weapon here. There exists numerous pros and cons between these two weapons, undoubtedly sparking controversy when deciding which one to choose. I'll provide a brief summary here on outlining the unique advantages of each over the other one. Starting with the bayonet, this does 5 more damage, which is 55 in total. It has a higher headshot damage, which is 2.3 multiplier, so in total doing 126 and a half damage. It has the ability to switch back to a firearm, and there is no speed debuff when using the bayonet. Moving on to the pike, it has a higher range, a faster swing rate, which is almost half of a second at 0.45 seconds, and ignore the startup since you can instantly attack with this thing when you whip it out. Pause. And this also has zombie penetration. Pause. It's also worth to mention that the pike can hit through barricades while the bayonet cannot. Thanks to the person in the Discord server for letting me know. The last thing I want to discuss which we did not talk about in the pike release video is the speed debuff. When you are wielding the pike, your movement is slower and it falls between the pace of someone reloading their weapon and the normal walking speed, but relatively the same as holding the sledgehammer objective melee weapon. However, this shouldn't cause much concern as the pike excels in close quarters combat rather than in weapon duels given its nature as a melee weapon. In conclusion, I just want to say that the Lancer subclass stands out as an impressive addition, in my view. For enthusiasts of melee builds, it's definitely one to consider adding to your arsenal. And despite being the most expensive weapon available in Bubble Shop, the lingering question of its worth is answered with one word. Absolutely. I mean, that's actually like a couple of words, but you know, it is whatever.